Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. A special welcome to any guests or visitors who are with us. I'm Pastor Linda Bullenbach, and I am filling in for Pastor Gina. Um, and this is my third and last weekend that I'll be filling in with you. It's been a joy and blessing to be with all of you. So thank you for having me here. Um, and uh, this morning is a special service, service of the word for healing. So there'll be a portion of the service early on when you will be invited to come forward, either to kneel at the rail or to stand at the rail if that is more comfortable. If you would like to receive laying on of hands and anointing, for healing in body, mind, or spirit. So we will ex um, extend that invitation in just a little while in the worship. And then after that, we will have also communion in the service. I remind you that all are welcome to commune with us who are baptized and believe that Christ is truly present as we share that sacrament. Let our worship begin. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We gather to hear the word of God, pray for healing of every kind, spiritual, physical, and emotional, and ask God's blessing for health and wholeness through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Great God, our healer, by your power the Lord Jesus healed and gave hope. As we gather in his name, look upon us with mercy and bless us with your healing spirit. Bring us comfort in the midst of pain, strength to transform our weakness, and light to illuminate our darkness. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind in serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken in our lives, in this nation and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Sisters and brothers, I invite you to come and receive a sign of healing and wholeness 
in the name of the triune God. And I will invite you to come as you feel so moved, and we will be providing laying on of hands and anointing at both sides. So please come forward as you feel ready. Please be seated.
Please rise. Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and on earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your sure defense, and help you to know that the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. First lesson is from Acts chapter 8. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, 
get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe this his generation? For his life was taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and staring, starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here's water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and, he was, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that he loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. 
No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it more fruitful. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Please be seated, and at this time I invite the children to please come forward. Good morning. How are all of you this morning? Do any of you grow plants at your house? Well, I just read a scripture that was about a vine, and I have some plants at my house that are kind of like vines. Um, well, they are vines. They're just not grape vines like Jesus was talking about. Well, this vine, he fell out of the pot. Look at him. He's kind of a mess. See, his root is all died, and here he's kind of died. And Well, he looks green up here, though, doesn't he? Do you think he's going to live when he's not connected to the rest of the vine? Oh, you, but you're right, Jesus did rise again. You are exactly right. And that's what we're celebrating right now because it's Easter, yes. But what about this plant? Do you think this guy's going to live without the rest of the plant? Probably not because when a plant gets pulled from the roots, it starts dying and takes a few days till it actually gets pulled. You are exactly right. That's exactly right. And so Jesus talks about us like branches on a vine. And what he says is that if we're not connected to the rest of the vine, which is Jesus, if we don't stay connected to Jesus, that we're like, kind of like this vine. 
we can't, we can't live. We can't live and thrive and do what we're supposed to do, which is to bear fruit. What do you think Jesus means when he tells us to bear fruit? Do we bear grapes? Do we grow grapes off the ends of our fingers? No. Well, what's the fruit in our lives? What do you think? What kind of... Hmm? What about, what about our love? Is that fruit? The way we love other people? Yeah, the way we love other people, the way we care for other people, that's fruit. It's not like fruit that we eat with our mouths, but it's fruit that feeds the world because it helps other people to feel nurtured and loved and cared for. So to do that, to provide that fruit, to care for and love other people, we have to stay connected to Jesus so we don't end up, like you said, withering and dying in a short time. Let's have a prayer. God, we give you thanks for all the beautiful things that you put in our world, including vines, and everything that you place in our world has a message for us, and you speak to us through the scriptures, and you speak to us through your world, you speak to us through one another, and we pray we would open our ears to listen, and most of all, to listen to these children who also have so much to teach us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming up, you guys. So a few years ago, a friend of mine at the hospital, she was another chaplain, she was doing some landscaping in her yard, and she had a, a climbing rose. I've always been fascinated by climbing roses, and she didn't want hers anymore, so she asked if I wanted to transplant it to my yard. And I thought that sounded cool. So I took her rose home, and I planted it right behind this Greek statue I bought a number of years ago. It's this beautiful Greek woman. And I had these visions of this blanket of red roses, you know, setting off this beautiful statue. Well, it's not big. It's like a beautiful statue. <laughs> and, and I thought, oh, it's going to be just lovely there, you know, with the privacy fence behind it. And it'd be, oh, it was going to be perfect. Well, the first year, all it grew was thorns. But I thought, well, you know, maybe I didn't do something right, give it a little more time. And second year, again, all we had was climbing thorns. We tried a third year, you know, we tried everything, fertilizing it, whatever, you know, trying to love it and prune it and, and it. But it just, I don't know, I think it just didn't make it. And so we ended up having to pull it up and plant a, I don't know, what do they call double knockout roses or something, something that was more, it wasn't a blanket, but at least it was trustworthy. It was able to grow. Well, I have tried to grow climbing roses before, and I finally figured out I just don't know much about climbing roses. I, I'm not able to, I tried to grow grapes once too, and that was an utter failure. So I don't know a lot about growing those things, but I do know this. I know that the purpose of a climbing rose is not just to produce thorns, it's supposed to produce roses. And the purpose of a grapevine is to produce grapes. That much I know. Well, Jesus uses the image of grapevines to talk about our relationship to one another and our relationship to him and to God. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. When you hear that and when you hear this gospel, what comforts you? Is it perhaps that image of belonging, you know, that language around remaining in Jesus and Jesus remaining in us? Or perhaps that sense of connection, you know, not just with God and with Jesus, but that connection with one another. And that's, that can be a very comforting thought that we're not in this alone. And what about that sense of purpose? that our purpose is to produce fruit, like we talked about with the children, the fruit that we produce in our lives, the love, the hope, the faith, the caring, all of those things. But what challenges us in this gospel? Perhaps it is the realization that in order for the vine to grow and produce fruit abundantly, the branches, which are us, need to be pruned. Let's give that a little more thought. When I think of pruning, I picture these sharp scissors-like tool that I use to prune things, and maybe some might have a little one too, for the house plants. 
um, because that's how I prune them. Um, my husband has a nickname for me. Sometimes he calls me Mrs. Potts. Last night someone came out and said, hi, Pastor Potts. So I don't know if it's a good idea to share that. But the reason he calls me that is I like to buy pots. I love to put plants in pretty little pots. And I don't have a very green thumb. I have sort of a, I don't know, like a lime green thumb. But <laughs> So I can kind of grow them, but then sometimes I get busy and I forget to water them. And then I try to make up for it by overwatering them. Um, but the thing that I don't do well is I don't keep my viney plants pruned very well, hence they look kind of like what I was showing the children this morning. Um, and so the things like English ivy, they don't thrive very well at my house. I don't have a problem cutting off the dead stuff. I like that. I find that cathartic. I, I cut off the diseased and dead parts of plants. I think that's why I like to garden and grow house plants because it's cathartic. It symbolizes. It's a spiritual ritual, kind of symbolizing the cutting away of the things in my life that are causing disease or th that are dying in my life, and, th and that feels good. What I struggle with is cutting off live stuff. I struggle to cut away, you know, those viney parts, those branches that are wandering away from the plant and getting longer and longer. I struggle with that. I would be a failure as a vine dresser because a vine dresser has to be able to cut away not just that which is dead, but also to prune back that which is alive and growing. A vine dresser needs to discern what needs to stay and what needs to go. A vine dresser must be willing to remove those portions of a plant that are even growing abundantly in order to allow other parts of the plant to thrive and prosper so that the entire vine can produce fruit abundantly. Jesus compares God to a vine dresser tending the vine. He says God removes that which is dead and prunes those branches that are fruit bearing. Jesus says, every branch in me that bears no fruit, God cuts away. And every branch that does bear fruit, God prunes to make it bear even more. And then Jesus goes on to say, you are clean already by means of the word that I have spoken to you. You know, all the times I've read that, I've thought, oh, that seems so disjointed that he goes from pruning to clean, just like that. Until I looked up the word pruning in the Greek. And the word for pruning is kathireo, which if you think about it, kathireo, what does it sound like? It sounds like catharsis, right? And we know that catharsis is kind of that cleansing away. And it actually also means to cleanse, to clean, to make clean. So Jesus is saying that the tool that God uses to prune is not a shears, but it is the word. That is what God uses to clean and to prune. So when we hear the word and it sinks into our minds and hearts, it can transform us by removing the dead stuff and pruning back that which is spreading out in too many directions so that the entire vine, not just our little branch, but the entire vine can produce abundant fruit. Think about this not so much in individual terms, but in corporate terms. We are all branches on the same vine. Perhaps some of us appear to be more fruitful than others. And I think that sometimes we even allow or expect some branches to be more fruitful than others. But once again, that is a way in which Jesus' vision is so different from our own. Jesus tells us that in order to distribute the resources more evenly so that the entire vine can remain healthy and productive, the branches with more fruit sometimes need to be trimmed back, allowing all of the branches to receive adequate nourishment and to allow that nourishment to be focused on bearing fruit. This corporate image can challenge our cultural image of what it means to be faithful. Our culture, and I think especially in the church, seems to applaud those who work the hardest, continually striving, giving, taking care of whatever and whoever needs to be taken care of, and too often becoming depleted and burned out. 
That is not what God asks of us. That is not Christ's vision for us. This is where the word becomes a pruning shears, a tool to cut away that which endangers the health of the whole. This gospel dispels the myth of work righteousness, that there is merit in working to excess or branching out in so many directions that all we're really doing is growing further and further away from the true source of our nourishment in life. In our culture, we approach life and health with such an individualistic perspective. In discerning our sense of purpose, we so often lose sight of our connection to the whole, sometimes to the point that we not only sacrifice our own health and well-being, but we stunt the growth of others. Today, as we contemplate our need for healing, individually, corporately, and globally, let us pray that we might allow the word to prune away that which has contributed to our dis-ease, our struggle to look beyond our individual needs and our individual responsibilities to the responsibilities, the needs, and the gifts of others. May we pray that God would help us to grow together and mutually to produce abundant fruit to feed a hungry world. Let us pray. God, we do pray for healing in body, mind, and spirit this day and in all the days to come, not only for ourselves, but for the whole, for one another, for all of us who are bound together in your love and connected to the true vine, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray for the witness of the church, the whole creation, wholeness of creation, and all who are in need. For the ministries that nurture faith formation, for missionaries and Bible study leaders, for those who are seeking, questioning, or curious, for seminarians, campus ministers, and the newly baptized, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the beauty of the health of the earth, for vineyards and orchards, groves and plains, for rain forests and arctic tundra, for volcanoes and mountains, hills and valleys, for oceans deep and rivers wide, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For spears to be beat into pruning hooks, for harsh words to be reformed into loving speech, for bombs and sniper attacks to cease, for justice and peace in every land, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For homeless youth and rejected children, for isolated grandparents and lonely nursing home residents, for the shamed, the slighted, and the disregarded members of our communities, for all the sick, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all who live with post-traumatic stress disorder and postpartum depression, for all who struggle with eating disorders and anorexia, for all who suffer in silence and all who suffer alone, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for Catherine of Siena and all the mystics and theologians who live eternally with you, for those we mourn and those we would rather forget, for the kingdom on earth to be as it is in heaven. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. We entrust all our prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them by the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hi, I come to you today as the council rep to worship and music. Um, I'd like to take care of one thing before I forget about it. We need, I'm wanting to uh, remind everyone that we have a short congregational meeting immediately following the first service next week. There is only one item on the agenda, and that is for us to um, vote whether or not to purchase the organ that Marilyn's been playing for a while. As everyone knows, our old one's been... Um, very gracious to us by living 20 years past its life expectancy, but it's giving us hints that it's ready to cross that rainbow bridge. Anyway, <laughs> um, the other item I want to talk to you about, you've gotten, uh, there is going to be a mailing going out this next week regarding our next capital funds campaign. Uh, these have been three year increment campaigns and we um, are at the end of our last, the, the one before, and we need to begin the next one. We're not quite done paying for our building. And I want to share with you how the, the money the, that went into the music department helps the, the life of the church. Um, we are blessed with a vibrant music program here. And it's not just, well, we, we have music. Well, the music is there for a purpose. It's not to make music just for the fun of it. It is to make music to glorify God. Um, I direct the little kids' choirs. I've got a couple of boys in here with me now. And they know that I'll ask them, what are, you, what are you supposed to bring to this? You bring your best, whatever your best is. The Bible says make a joyful noise. What we're doing isn't a perfect performance. It is bringing our best. It is a musical offering. And we have uh, a handbell room in there on a Wednesday night. Let me tell you what the schedule is in case you don't know. And it's like a pattern woven together. Um, first we have uh, cherub chimes, which are the little kids playing chimes. We also have cherub bells at the next grade up. They're in another room practicing at the same time, and our um, junior and high schoolers are uh, on a little bit of a hiatus right now, but they also will be practicing at that same time, and we have almost enough rooms. There's sometimes it's a little crowded, but we have that going, and then the next half hour, that transfers to uh, God's Kids, which Rachel directs, uh, the, the kids' choir, that is awesome. And uh, we also have the older kids singing. They're practicing in another spot at the same time. And then we have the, the grown-up bells, uh, joy ringers, practicing at the same time. And then after that, we have the adult 
uh, vocal choir. There is just a whole lot of stuff going on on a Wednesday night and then warming up on Sunday mornings, and it is a blessing to have that facility and also the flexibility of this space that allows. We have a, a great space for our praise band and, and for them to extend out, and I am thankful for the vision that went into and the money that went into making this a space where people can share their gifts to be part of the music and worship program of our church. Thank you. Oh, just a second, Marilyn. I forgot one really important part. <laughs> I knew this. I knew I would forget something. Um, you're, when you get these letters in the mail, you're going to have kind of three options. You can sign up. You can obligate yourself for a year, or you can obligate yourself for three years. And we would also encourage you to make, uh, and I've forgotten what the term is, uh, but like a, a, a jumping off gift, a bonus gift up front, just a kickoff gift. So please keep that in mind and uh, thank you. I, I'm really done now. <laughs> Be known to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread, as you were made known to the disciples. Receive these gifts and the offering of our lives, that we may be your risen body in the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let us feast this Easter day on Christ, the bread of heaven. Hallelujah. Please be seated and come forward as directed. We will have communion by intinction this morning, so please take the wafer and dip it either into the wine or the grape juice. Come for all is ready, the gifts of God for the people of God.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Uh, any announcements that we need to lift up? Yes, please be seated then. This is going to be a long one. No. <laughs> Do you want the mic? Again, I'm going to ask, remind you that there is a concert this afternoon at 3 o'clock at Schweitzer United Methodist Church by the Springfield Mid-America Singers. It's free. Come, listen. There are several pieces, several instruments, including a harp, a couple of cellos, some violins, and some flutes. Well, we're singing too, but you know. <laughs> um, anyway, it's a psalm by Telemann. That name doesn't sound too very near to me. But also a requiem by Saint-Saëns. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's going to be amazing. Please come. Three o'clock. Sorry, I didn't say three o'clock. You know where Schweitzer is? East on Sunshine. Just across the railroad tracks, on the other side of the railroad tracks. They're Methodists, so, you know. <laughs> Thanks. Any other announcements? Then please rise for the benediction. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.